Hey, 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 you guys. Let me get him an invite sent. Okay. Give everybody time to get back on here, get notifications. Hey, 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 you guys. Whew. <laughs> this has been such an interesting thing. We are getting this. We really are. This is going to be okay. Um, the air, the uh, power is back on at my house. So, as you can see, I'm sweating up a storm. I need one of those, what they call the uh, oil pads going on. <laughs> Let's see. Bring him on camera. Dude, if this is your very first That's time. Hi, Daniel. Hello. That's much better. Now, now you're actually the right direction, you know. Yeah. So, yay. <laughs> So, if this is your first time on here, you guys, give me a thumbs up. Let me know. Give me a thumbs up or put the, the number one for, like, the very first time you're here. We just want to tell you hello. So, hey, 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 you guys. And I see that it looks like there's a larger amount of people hopped on more quickly, which lets me know this uh, bandwidth, whatever's going on, is much better than the last time. So, you guys, share this to your groups or with your friends on your page, uh, whatever you can. Uh, I know it doesn't let me do that while I'm on here live when I'm the host or whatever. But um, Prophet Daniel's with us today. He's um, doing some shares, looks like, on his phone. And yep. who else is on here? Are you? Is this your first time, you guys? Let me see. I'm not seeing anybody with a thumbs up or the number one right now. Wow. Okay. It's so good to see y'all on here this evening. Prophet the Daniel. The weird buzzing noise is, is people in the background tagging the posts, I think. That's what the weird buzzing noise is. Oh, yeah. is that my phone doing that or I yours? think it's people. It's probably people tagging in the comments. I should have disabled the comments before I started, but oh. it's been one of those afternoons. <laughs> <laughs> no. Wow. I'm just telling you, I woke up this morning and I almost canceled the video then. And I said, no, I'm going to push through. I don't ever get sick. And I knew I wasn't sick. We had done the uh, cleanup day for the prayer room. We've gotten the prayer house uh, done. It's so much nicer in there. Uh, we can actually be in there now without seeing a pile of junk in one area. But we stirred up a bunch of dust and stuff doing that. And I'm not allergic to dust. Yet at the same time, I was sneezing and it runny nose. And I was like, what on earth? You would think, what? I said, oh, I rebuke this. And then that gets cleared up. Okay. I still got a little bit of a puffy eye from, you know, the sneezing or whatever. Well, then what happened this afternoon? A storm came through. I rebuked it immediately. It, it, all the winds and the storm part died down. Well, then the power goes out. Wow. It's like. You know, it, it's already, it was the uh, low 90s outside. So I was, you know, obviously I've got this little sweating factor going on. <laughs> and I, this is El Natural as far as this goes. I'm telling you, we're here anyway. We're here anyway, you guys. First time watchers from California. Who is that? Taisha Thrills. Well, hey there. Hey there. Oh, my goodness, you guys. Hey, hey, hey. Prophet Daniel, tell the people a little bit about you. Some of the people don't know you. Many of them do. Some of yeah, them don't. Yeah. Boy, where to start with that? Wow. How, how do I condense that into like, uh, you know, <laughs> trying to figure out how to condense that down as a doozy. Um, You're a family man. Yeah, I'm born and raised in California. Baptist Presbyterian mm -hmm. background. Um which, yeah, I know is kind of an unusual thing for somebody that does what I do. Um, retired from Walmart after 25 years. Um, wow. Was in retail for 32 years. Um, gosh, been in ministry now for, oh, man, I, I, I called when I was seven. Uh, probably been in ministry for over 30 years. Uh, wow. Just operating, operating in the prophetic for at least 40 years now. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Uh, just one of those lifestyles that you kind of go, man, is that even real? And then, you know, you, and especially if you're the one who lived it and you look back on it and you go, did all that really happen? Or is that just a huge, long, drawn-out dream? So, <laughs> so and, 
so there's but yeah, it's, yeah we're, over the last i'd say the last five years though um really been doing a lot in social media and so that this this whole venue has opened up a whole nother and, and then watching the signs wonders and miracles and god moving on people's lives over the last five years it's been it's extraordinary mm-hmm. but you know what it, i tell you what Every believer should live an extraordinary life. If you live a supernatural life, it was designed to be extraordinary, extra ordinary, not ordinary, extra ordinary. So, and, and you know what? That, but that's what God does with your life when you, when you allow Him to have your life. That's the truth. So, Amen. That is the truth right there. Um, one of the things I've noticed is, you know, when you see people who are fame hungry or they're hungry for chasing after with the wrong motive, I guess you could say they seem quite fervent and they seem to be chasing, but they seem to be pursuing, they say God, but with a motive behind it that oftentimes they don't recognize as the wrong motive. Like to be, it's almost like you can see ugly dirt on the face of some and when you see that, when you see, because this is the time in the season, I really feel like God is saying that he is promoting and advancing those in the kingdom who are pursuing him, who have his heart, who he can trust with his heart to take it and to run with it. Share the video if you'd like to, please, either on your own page or some groups um, or on a friend's timeline or in the messenger. Um, and so then what do we do? What do you do when you see someone that you can tell they're pursuing the Lord uh, but at the same time, it looks to be like they're pursuing more of, I want to be famous than I want Jesus. Okay? That's when you pray for those people. That's when you pray for them and ask the Lord to show them the dirt on their face. Because there's times in my life or even other people's lives that where they have mentioned, you know, where that's tried to get in there before. And then you just got to humble yourself. Humble yourself. Have you ever dealt with that, Prophet Daniel? Oh yeah, a lot. I mean, and and that's a common thing. And, and you know what? I always tell people, one of the things that's that's the hardest in ministry is the qualifying spirit, feeling like you have to be qualified to do ministry. And you know what? That the the only qualifier in ministry is the Holy Spirit. Amen. Because He carries all of it. it it's not about where you went to seminary. It's not about whether or not you have sixty. Uh, doctors of theology on your wall it's not about all that other stuff it literally is about the holy ghost so so the holy ghost wants to wants to permeate your life and thereby use you to further the kingdom of god because that's that's what he came to do he came to lead us and guide us into all the truth and as we're in that truth he then causes that truth to come through our lives and we begin to minister it to others. And so as, as a result of that, you start seeing stuff mm-hmm. happen. And, and it's literally yes. because of the Holy Ghost. It's not because of the individual mm-hmm. person. God's not a respecter of persons, folks. Let's get rid of that idea. Mm-hmm. You know, because, because too many people, I think they think that if they're, if they go to and do all this, jump through all the religious hoops, do all the stuff they're supposed to do, in the theological realm that somehow they're going to get qualified by God. And, and somehow we're going to, we're going to become something that God's going to respect more or something like that. And, and it's all an illusion. And, and you know what? I, I realized you, you want to come up and be that, which is what God's called you to be. Then you learn how to decrease so he can increase. Yes. You, you learn how to become the servant of all. You learn, you learn how to do the things that Jesus did, like wash the feet of the saints. And, and, Amen. and, 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 and all, all kinds of crazy mm-hmm. stuff happens when you relinquish your rights and your life to the one who's the only one, let's face it, who's worthy of it. So, so God becomes that catalyst in your life that causes all those crazy supernatural dynamics to happen. And you know what? I was talking to a friend of mine. I don't remember if it was you or if it was, maybe it was Luke. 
or it might have been William. I don't remember. Anyway, um, and we got in the discussion on the prophetic, and and he and I were looking at each, talking to each other, and I said, you know what? I said I can't imagine why people want to be prophets. And he said, to me, he says, yeah, you know what? I don't know either. And I said, if they really knew the kind of suffering you go through to get to that place, Come nobody on. would want it. And and I was like, and and there's because there's so much stuff that comes with Come that. On. I mean, yeah, there's an incredible anointing. There's there's you see all kinds of things, hear all kinds of things in the spirit realm. There's all kinds of stuff that takes place, but when you're on your way to that, there a lot of it is not a it's not a pleasant journey. I mean, you're not down on the beach sunning yourself. You know, you're not you're not in that place where where you're feeling like everything is just, you know, the, the, the green meadows and the brooks of kids running and stuff like that. I mean, it just isn't. And, and you get a real disillusionment. And so when God called me to this, I went, I don't know if I want this, God. I really don't know if I want this. And and it's and so so when I was talking to William about it, he and I were laughing because there's so much that goes with it that if people really realize the call, the journey. And this is why I think you need so much grace on your life for this kind of thing. Man. Because it is, it's extreme sorrow sometimes. And if you wonder if that's true or not, just go read the Bible. Look what happened to those poor guys. So, man, yeah. I'll tell you, it, it's a life of no. sacrifice. <laughs> it really is. Yeah, we're not going to go into a lot of personal details, but I'm sure Prophet um, Daniel, as well as myself, we both have uh, things in our own lives that we're like, you know, that it's like, what on earth? And they weren't pleasant seasons. They weren't pleasant times, okay? Um, and so, again, if you are Whoa. trusting in the Lord, when we stick close to him, there's doors, okay? There's these doors in this season. And for these doors to open, because these are special doors, presence, his presence in our life, the more time that we spend with him, the quality time that we spend with him, that right there is what is going to um, open those doors for us. I'm going to try to get Prophet Daniel back on here. It seems to have boom. Off what on earth, uh, Prophet Daniel? If you can hop, if he hops back on here, <laughs> ah, I'm not seeing him. Let me see. Oh dear, it says I've already sent the invite. Okay. Um, if y'all see Prophet Daniel comment, let me know. I'll try to bring him back on camera. It says I've already sent the invite. It will not let me send the invite now. So we're going to do this until he gets back on here and can make a comment. Um, wow. Anyway, what I was talking about is the doors in this season. Okay. Yeah, we did lose Daniel, but he's coming back. He's coming back. Uh, Daniel, if you can comment on here, then I'll click your name and try to bring you on camera that way. We'll try to do that. Um, and when that happens, what do we do? We're with the Lord. When those doors are there and they don't seem to budge, they don't seem to open, they don't seem to move, we just press into the Lord. And they will open because his presence will go and touch those doors. And what does the Bible say? He opens doors that no man, you know, no, he opens doors that no one can open. And he shuts doors. You know, he opens doors. You know, and he doesn't. He opens doors no man can shut, is what that verse says. Okay, there it is. Ha-ha, it's not letting me bring you on. This is interesting. Okay. Oh, dear. Daniel, I don't know if you can hop off and then hop back on again and see if I can do it that way. It's not letting me, like when I touch your name. Okay, there it is. Okay. This has been. It worked. Okay. 
There you are. <laughs> pray in your prayer language. If you're Lord. a sister on here, if you wouldn't mind praying. Because when I tried to quote just a few seconds ago, when Daniel had gotten thrown off, and then when I'm trying to quote one of the most basic Bible scriptures of all, I, can't, I couldn't even remember how it went. And it was like I was going in circles going, at some point it's going to come out. So if you would pray in your prayer language, I would greatly appreciate that. Um, I can just feel something, okay? Uh, anyway, so Prophet Daniel, what have you been hearing about, say, seasonally or anything that the Lord is um, telling you about people in the kingdom as far as elevation or as far as opportunities and things like that? Have you been hearing anything from the Lord or anything besides that that might even be might not be what God's even talking to you about? Well, there's, there's a lot on the hopper right now in, in the spirit realm, but I think one of the main things that's really going on with a lot of people right now is there there's connections that are being made in between the saints and, and the connections that are being made are a lot different than what has been in the past. I mean, we, we had what's called fellowship in the past, but I think what's happening, and I don't know if you saw any of Saturday night's broadcast. Did you get a chance to watch any of that from, from the meeting I did out here in California on Saturday night? Um, I did it, some. It, I, I haven't. Yeah. I have a, yeah, I got a meeting out here that I do once a month and it's almost like an experimental group. I, I call it an experimental group kind of thing, but this particular group is very interesting because we allow a, a free flow of the prophetic and it's Amen. very different than what most people are accustomed to. So, so, and yeah, all those people who watch it are like, yeah, it was a blast. <laughs> Because um, it was. because what we're doing is we're allowing we're allowing the prophetic to flow through individual members throughout the room, and so as that flow is happening, there's something that happens between each member of the body of Christ, and you start seeing uh, an uh, an uptick in in the prophetic realm, and so as this kind of dynamic is going on, you start seeing all kinds of stuff breaking off people, people getting radically healed. I mean, all kinds of trans, it's, and, but people are learning how to flow in the prophetic in a way that you can't really learn in a book. I mean, let's face it. All of us who are interested in the prophetic, we've all read the books. Oh, this is how you do this. This is how you do that. I, I mean, all the way back to Bill Hammond and some of, some of the guys who were just powerful in the prophetic flow and, and these guys would teach and train this thing but oftentimes you never see it in the church i mean let's face it how many times do you see and, it, and there may be some some exceptions to that but you don't hardly ever see this kind of stuff happen in the regular services because we have a certain form that we keep but when you're in and, and the kingdom of God is an operation. And I was talking to you about this earlier, I think on the phone, that there's a distinct difference between the way the flow is in Scripture versus the way we have actually done it. And so I'm starting to see an uptick yeah. in the ability of the saints as a whole to flow in this stuff. And, and when you start Amen. seeing them operating mm -hmm. in it, you start seeing them actually getting some, getting some, um, <laughs> wow. They're not only learning it, but they're, get, they're getting excited about it. They're actually experiencing what it's like. And when you experience something, there, there, is, there, is, an, there is an understanding that's imparted that you can't get from a book. Let's face it. I don't know about you, Tiff, but I'm a hands-on kind of person. I like having my hands on in situations right. and things that, that where God is doing to where I can actually experience it. And, and it's, it's an amazing thing when you say, because it, it deposits something inside you. So what I'm seeing God doing in the body of Christ, I don't know about in the church necessarily, but in the body of Christ, there's an up, not only a, an understanding here, but there's an experiential knowledge God's dropping on his people. 
And we're really starting to yes. see this thing take place on a large scale. And, and you know what? The, the prophetic, the home meetings, the prophetic meetings in the houses and stuff like that, that's what happened in Acts. I think there's something mm. taking place in the body of Christ where those kinds of things are coming back. And they're coming back on storm because there's there's yeah. prophets and apostolic that's being raised up right now that is that is – I'll, I'll say allowing for that dynamic to take place on a smaller scale. So, so all of these things that are going on right now in the body, we're starting to see people really get excited because God's using them. And I, I had my friend Deborah Ann with and Denise and, uh, on Saturday. They, they, were, they were in that meeting. So they can tell you there, there's there is a, a an honoring that's taking place of the gifts and the call and the ministries in the body of Christ. And, and God is really fashioning, moving mm -hmm. and, and creating in the in the lives of the individuals that dynamic that is that is releasing them to actually do the work of the ministry. And it's like nothing I have ever seen in the past. So God is, I think God is, is raising up the body finally, at least from what I can see to actually do the work of the ministry, like what it says in scripture. Amen. So, so, so there's, there's, there's that that's going on and there's a massive, mm -hmm. massive uptick on the gifts, the word of knowledge, the word of wisdom, prophecy, well, you know uh, healing. Miracles. Yeah. Well, Saturday, I so, noticed wow. when I was watching, you know, that young girl, uh, one of the, when, the spot that I was watching was the young girl with the long, dark hair. She got up and she said, this is going to seem strange, but I need to sing an Indian song that I know or something similar. And she said something similar to that and, and dance around prophetically as an act of some kind. And I saw her do that in your living room. And I was like, Wow. Just the fact that, you know, she knew it, it was unusual, it was different, and yet she was willing to step out of the box and obey the Lord. It really is. And, you know, her name is Aldina. She won't oh. care if I share her name on here. She shared, was shared a dozen times that night on the broadcast. But she is brand new at this, guys. She's only been doing this about two years. This is virtually brand new for her, but she's, she's learning. I mean, there's a lot of people on here who relate to this. So if you're only, if you're only in, in the prophetic, you're brand new at it. It's okay. It really is. Okay. God will begin to mentor you by the Holy ghost. He really will just like he's done her. And he's, and people will say, well, you've been mentoring her. She doesn't live very close to me guys. She lives like two hours away. What little mentoring I've given her is to encourage her to seek out the Holy Spirit and allow him to mentor her. Now, sure, I've spoken into her life a lot. Right. I've decreed and declared a lot over her. That's true. But it is the Spirit of God that is your mentor. You understand that? And I, I think on the last live stream I did, and I shared this Saturday night too, is that there you have received an unction from the Holy One. Anybody remembers this? You've received an unction from the Holy One. The unction is the is there to teach you how to function in everything that God's got for you. So so if you're if you're experiencing the unction, the reason you're experiencing the unction is so that you can learn to function. So this is how 